Welcome to the Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology demonstration of Jig and Fixture. Uh, what we're going to be showing you is a multitude of things. First, we're going to be showing you some large assembly tools and some memory management tools inside of Solid Edge. Uh, I'll talk about how you can uh, utilize kinematics inside of your Sol uh, Solid Edge assemblies along with importing data uh, and what you can do with that and then talk about some systems design tools and then we'll move on to uh, the drafting uh, portion and, and the drafting tools that we have inside of Solid Edge. So first let's just kick off and, and look at this uh, assembly. Uh, everyone's definition of a large assembly is, is different uh, but we have a tool inside of Solid Edge that shows uh, how big your assembly is and you can see here we have around 2400 parts 2280 uh, unique parts and we have a list that shows you individually how many is uh, inside of each and then how large is this file on disk some other tools that we have are our selection uh, tools inside of Solid Edge. One is the small parts. Small part tools allows you to go through and just select and have the system start from the smallest part and just work its way up to its largest part just by going through this little selection process and as you can see that they highlight there on the screen. Um, I'll be showing you some other selection tools. One is if you want to select a part and as you can see our selection tools over here in our command bar become active I want to look at this particular part, but I want to see where it is inside of one of my other sub-assemblies. But I also would like to know, are there any other identical parts, the other parts being used in other sub-assemblies or inside of the top level assembly. And you can simply uh, choose to hide those or show those or show only those different tools that you can do with that particular part. Next, I want to be able to select a part, but I want to do a range box. I want to do a 3D range box of how big do I want this or what is the range that I want to look at. And you can simply select those and, and visually do uh, something to them, either activate them, inactivate them, hide or show them. Uh, you can also select a part or a sub-assembly and say what are these parts constrained to and as I go ahead and like, I continue to select it is recursive and it will be able to select those um, as well. Another uh, selection tool that we have is called zones. Zones allows me to define uh, a particular box uh, that you will see here and so what you can do is you can define these boxes and in your particular uh, assembly and be able to uh, select those very quickly so here I want to select the lower section and you can see I have some parts hidden but once I select that particular zone notice that those parts uh, they come back I can choose to show or hide a particular zone and you can see that you have the ability to very quickly turn parts on and off uh, in a particular area Another tool that we have is be able to select uh, visible parts on the screen. So here I just want to tell Solid Edge, select those for me, and then I want to say show only. And then as I zoom out, you'll see that it turned off all the other parts around there and just turned on the parts that I'm zoomed into. So an area you don't have to worry about uh, creating this or help uh, use this tool to create your your zone if you so choose but also we have configurations that help you move uh, between uh, parts activate them inactivate them in other words put them into memory take them out of memory uh, and to be able to work in manageable large assembly another option that we have is talking about kinematics where we just want to be able to pick on a part and move it and maybe to open it up right uh, but you know you can do that manually if you so choose. You do have options uh, when dealing with this. You can either have an analysis or you know have it detect any collisions or even physical motion. So if this hit another part, it would actually move along with it. But let's go ahead and just reset that because I want Solid Edge to do this for me automatically through kinematics. So we're going to add a motor. I'm going to add a motor to this particular part here, and uh, you can see that we have a rotational or a linear. Uh, direction and I'm going to tell it on this particular joint I want to limit this motor to be 135 uh, degrees that is a uh, differentiator for solid edge and very unique to solid edge and again I want to uh, limit this one to be 90 degrees and now I've uh, placed two of those motors and what can you do with it from there well what we can do is we can actually take this and we can actually simulate what this motor is going to do so just like we had with move part the options in here we have some we can choose to have no analysis 
collision detection, physical motion, which motors can we uh, want to have through this simulation. And it goes through, and all we have to do is hit play, and as you see, the two parts are now going through this motion, which how far they need to go. One is going to 135 degrees, and one is actually going to 90. But we see that the parts actually collide with one another, even though we told it not to look at that. But what we want to do is we want it to be able to turn on a particular motor at a different instance. So just like if you were programming your PLCs, you want your motor to turn on at a different instance. So here we want the first motor to go, and it has a limit of 135 degrees. So once it hits that, you'll see that the next motor is then going to start at a different time and also go up to 90 degrees. So you can see very quickly how you can use motors to sh simulate a very... Uh, complex or simple kinematic study here very quickly. So next let's just move on to how we want to bring in our part and how we can manipulate and, and bring in the imported parts. So here we're just going to open up a file which is actually our frame uh, which comes in through a JT format. JT is a uh, universal standard uh, by Siemens PLM software that is a very lightweight uh, form and we're able to do multiple things. Uh, we're able to look at if there's surfaces, if there's curves, uh, what other options do we want to put uh, on an import and we also can link it to a file if we so choose. But in this particular case we're just going to open this up into an assembly. Now a JT file can have lightweight tessellated data or it can also contain bodies or it can contain a mixture of, of lightweight or uh, lightweight and bodies all in the same file. And Solid Edge is unique because we are able to look at the JT file in um, that mixed environment. So in other words, the, the JT file that we have open here is a mixture of solids and tessellated or IE lightweight data. So you can see here the red parts, our orange parts are all solid data, but the gray part is an actually is a tessellated data. There's no actually solid in that. It's just there for visual representation. And so what that allows us to do is have a very lightweight file in our large assembly but we may still need to go in and see how much does this part weigh because this is actually going on top of a frame and we may need to know that information so what we can do is we can go in and we can inspect and take a look at the properties and we're going to take a look at the physical properties of all the parts not just the assembly itself and so with our uh, physical property manager you can see that we have all the information about all these files inside of here we're going to select what type of material do we want we'll just go in and this is all going to be steel this is all structural steel so I just want to be able to copy that do a simple windows operation of copying and paste and then go through and update that and what it's going to do is going to open up all those files save all this information to every single one of those part files and then save it inside of our assembly and as you can see we now have an updated our mass has all been updated but I want to uh, focus your attention to the screen here to one particular part and that was that tessellated part which is the body sim that is actually 581 kilograms this is the heaviest part in the entire assembly and because of that the reason why I point that out is is just tessellated data only as you can see here, this is the body sim part. It is tessellated, but Solid Edge is able to give you a very accurate model, even though it's very lightweight and doesn't have, contain any kind of solid information. So we're just going to save that. And now what we want to do is we want to bring it into uh, our assembly here. So we can just go out to our parts library. And we're going to hide a few things to give us some more view here. We, we named that one uh, body as you see there and what we want to do is we want to orient this to a location uh, that's the orientation that I want to bring in but that's just the uh, the body itself so let's take a look at and we just want to grab that assembly and what we want to do is we want to orient it to how we want to bring it into our assembly and that looks pretty good so now all we can do is just zoom out and just drag and drop this inside of here now Solid Edge gives you a multitude, multitude of tools to use uh, to assemble things uh, in your parts and assemblies uh, together. So here we're just going to grab the bottom 
of that and we're going to place it onto our assembly here and then what we want to do is we want to be able to turn on a few things well with the with our tools inside of our uh, Pathfinder, we can go in and we can easily turn on uh, reference planes that are inside of this part or this assembly that we want to. And, and there's a multitude of ways you can do things. Is one, you can either choose to select things uh, inside of the 3D window, or you can also choose to select things inside of the Pathfinder. So, however, uh, it's easier for you, or whatever makes you feel more comfortable in selecting, uh, you can do that. Uh, two different ways so it makes life uh, a whole lot easier for you next we want to be able to I'm just going ahead and uh, auto hide that one next I want to be able to show you all the different types of assembly constraints that we have inside of Solid Edge and we've been using Flash Fitch which enables and in, uh, interacts with the user and understands what they're selecting and what is the best uh, relationship but you're able to go back and, and choose different ones if you need to in this particular case we're going to choose tangency and I'm going to go pick this face. I'll let Quick Pick come up here and help me select the information that I want and then be able to uh, rotate this assembly around because what we want to look at is we want to look at this other part. And we'll just grab that face right there. And you'll see now we look at it from the top view. Everything is in center line. Those two planes that we selected was the center line of the body. And so now we have our part inside of here. So what can we do with this? Now we need to start assembling our um, jigs and fixtures all around this frame. So one, <clears throat> I'm going to change to um, a configuration because our uh, frame body is so heavy, we want to be able to uh, have some structural steel on the bottom of, of this assembly to sustain uh, that weight. So let's just take a look at this. And what we're going to do is we're going to place a series of frame members along the bottom here. And what we can do is we'll go over, we'll select the frame command inside of Solid Edge. And what we want to be able to do is go in and select what type of framing condition that we want. There's a many options here. One is what kind of corner treatments do you want? Uh, do you want to have a miter, a uh, butt one or a butt two? Do you want to add a, radi a radius to here? Or do you want to go ahead and extend the uh, frame component or have a no corner treatment at all? And you can also uh, choose to have coping if you uh, so choose. But the, at this point in time we just want to go in and we want to uh, choose this type of option. And next what we want to do is we want to choose a chain option because we just want to select all four of those at the same time. And Solid Edge is going to go out there and build that frame set for me. Now, let's say you wanted to uh, didn't have didn't want to have a uh, a mitered option but you wanted to have a, a but two type condition well simply go back select your options and select those inside of there next I want to go ahead and uh, take a look at some different end conditions well solid edge is unique in that you can ch modify these end conditions even before you get out of the creation and I want to select two of them I can select multiple ones of them in this take case instead of having a but two condition down at the end I want to have a fillet condition and we're just going to give it 10, 10 inches or we may come back and say well you know something I just need that to have a mitered uh, end and we can have a mitered end uh, as well as have our butt two condition down here at the bottom so you can see how quickly it is to create these frame sets in this case here I just want to go out and I just want to select uh, multiple uh, selections so I just simply just want to go around this information if I get something that I don't want I can just simply hit control key and deselect that information and have it go out and build this for me uh, on the fly and very quickly and very easily next we want to have uh, some welding operations so here let's just go into uh, this and what I want to be able to do is now I want to tell Solid Edge I want this to be a weldment so we're going to choose what type of material we'll just say steel and the bead material is going to be the same and my density we'll put that density as 0.225 inside of there as well so now I want to choose uh, my welding operation so we'll just go over to features I want to have a fillet weld and fillet weld is going to give me present me with an options box here of how uh, I want this to be placed we'll just say a half inch and I'm going to say that because that's what I'm going to be dealing with uh, mostly in my design